Boxing Ego here. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon on the top of your screen to get notified when the latest new content drops. One. Do you want to know seven reasons why Danny Swift Garcia beats Keith one time Thurman? If so, stay tuned to this video. What up Fight World, it's your boy Ego and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. Now I want to apologize, usually I get these videos out quicker. It is fight week. I've been extremely busy traveling. It was that Broner fight and Canelo Chavez press tour. So I didn't realize how soon this fight was coming. So it took me a while to actually put this together, but I wanted to put it together. It's a huge fight. Shout out to Showtime, shout out to CBS, Free TV, Danny Garcia versus Keith Thurman. Now, let me just get out a few particulars and then I'll get into the seven reasons why I believe Danny Garcia will beat Keith Thurman. Now, this disclaimer, like I do in the seven reasons, this is my personal opinion. And if you don't want that, you shouldn't have clicked on the video. I have nothing against either fighter. This is a great fight for boxing. It's a 50 50 fight you can make an argument a solid argument for either fight fighter winning this fight and that's why we want to see it this is just my personal opinion I may the best man win I could be right but I could also be wrong now when I predict a fight it has nothing to do with the person personally it's just what I feel based on patterns habits and from seeing the two fighters but hopefully I get to work with both these guys in the future and this is just my reasons why I think Danny Garcia will beat Keith Thurman. I could be wrong, but I could also be very right. Now let's take a look at the seven reasons. In no particular order, let's get it in. Number one, Danny Garcia has a better chin. Reason I feel this way is I've seen Danny Garcia take some monstrous shots from good punchers or monstrous punchers. I would say one that really rings a bell and stands out for me was on one of the biggest cards for that year, actually the biggest card that year, and that was Mayweather Canelo, the one card. Danny Garcia was the co-main event, and he fought Lucas Matisse. A lot of people thought he was going to lose that fight, and even though he beat Lucas Matisse, Lucas Matisse had power and he was mowing through guys like Lamont Peterson, he knocked him out, a Jose, Humberto Soto, you know what I mean? And a lot of people thought that Matisse would carry that energy and that power into the Danny Garcia fight and there was no way that Garcia would see the end of 12 rounds. It did go the decision, Danny Garcia had a knockdown in there, but there's this one particular sequence where Lucas Matisse was trying to mount an attack mid to late in the fight and he knocked Danny Garcia's mouthpiece out and they showed it in slow motion. You can literally see Garcia's mouthpiece fly out and he, he ate the whole shot. He took the whole shot and from what Angel Garcia said in interviews post fight, Danny Garcia actually pissed blood after that particular fight versus Matisse. So when it comes to a chin, I do think Danny Garcia has the the sturdier chin, the chin that's not going anywhere or it's gonna it's gonna take more to wilt than Keith Thurman. I've seen Keith Thurman hurt on multiple occasions and I guess just body language in terms of when they when they get hit with certain things. And we haven't seen Thurman in there with as many punchers that hit him flush, you know what I mean? So I, I just, it's it's my intuition from what I've seen from both fighters. I think Danny Garcia has the better of the chin. Number two, big fight experience. Now, this is a big one. A lot of people sleep on Danny Garcia and they say this and that about the man, but the guy has bodies on his resume. And he's been a champion for longer than Keith Thurman. Keith Thurman beat Diego Chavez to become a champion, but Danny Garcia, he's the type of fighter that he doesn't necessarily look special, so he didn't have as hard of a time getting fights. Now, when you're in there with him, it might be a different situation. The looks can be deceiving. Keith Thurman, he was calling out people. He was this knockout artist. Madonna pulled out of the fight with Keith Thurman a long time ago. That was supposed to be Keith Thurman's HBO debut, things like that. So his attitude, his style of fight, his power, people at a point 
they didn't seem eager to give this guy a shot. So for whatever reason, Danny Garcia, maybe because he doesn't look surprisingly special or anything like that, he was getting fights. And for that reason, he has better, better, a better resume and better big fight experience. I mean, stepping in as a challenger versus Eric Morales, that's what got it on and popping for his career. He rose to the occasion and beat him. Then he beat him later in a rematch, knocked him out just to put the icing on the cake. He fought Amir Khan as the underdog. He's been in there with Lamont Peterson. He's been in there with Lucas Matisse. Like I said, the biggest card that year, Canelo versus Mayweather. It was on that particular card. He fought Zab Judah at the Barclays. Judah being of um, a Brooklyn native. And that fight was at the Barclays in Brooklyn. So everything I've seen, the, even the Staples Center, the fight with Robert Guerrero, all of Danny Garcia's fights have kind of prepared him for this moment. He has the better resume, and I think he just ultimately has bigger fight experience. Now, Keith Thurman has some. He fought Sean Porter at the at the Barclays, but it doesn't compare. Like, he fought on the Broner Maidana card. He fought Jesus Otocras as, like, a co-main event. But Danny Garcia, when I look at him, he has a lot of main event, main event. And you look at Broner Maidana, that was a big card in San Antonio, Texas, I believe. But it's not, it doesn't compare to Mayweather Canelo card that set records and, and broke Oscar De La Hoya and Mayweather live gate. You know what I'm saying? So to me, Danny Garcia has big fight experience. And the way that comes into um, play here is Garcia Thurman is a big fight. I just think Danny Garcia has been at this particular moment before. Like he, he's, he has more experience with the big fights and experience. You have to look at a fight like this, a 50-50 fight stylistically on paper and everything. Every minute detail means something and it matters because the end objective is to get that W and you have to look and, and strategize and, and to me I think Danny Garcia has faced these moments and had the bigger fights over Keith Thurman number three timing this is an easy one Danny Garcia a lot of people they like oh he's not this he's not that but one thing you can't take away is the dude has timing and people there's there's in boxing there's a way to negate anything right if somebody is a thinker and likes to use the ring and has ring generalship then you give them less time to think if someone has speed you can negate that with timing if someone has power you can have a good defense if somebody's moving a lot you can jab them to disrupt that and slow them down. Or if someone has power, you can hit them to the body and, and start dragging them into the later rounds so they naturally fatigue and the body shots and the, the fatigue sets in and their power starts to, to diminish. So there's a way to negate everything. And what I see with Danny Garcia, one of his strongest attributes is he's a counter puncher who relies on timing. He needs that timing and it's clearly something he's practiced and that he works on. And the best example for me was against Amir Khan. He was getting blasted for the first two rounds. And he even said post fight, he was like, oh, this is just a human. I mean, how fast could he possibly be? And he said, when he actually got in the ring with Amir Khan and Amir Khan was tattooing him in the first two rounds, even opened up an early cut. He was just like, oh fuck, this guy really is fast, right? You can say whatever you want about Amir Khan's chin and all that. The fact is, Amir Khan is hard to outbox and you have to be a Canelo or Danny Garcia because you look at it, Maidana's a puncher, Maidana's a puncher and he, he hurt Khan, but he wasn't able to pull the trigger. He wasn't able to get him out of there like Danny Garcia and Canelo. And I think that's because they're both counter punchers. So even though Amir Khan was able to blister him with speed, they're able to slow him down just enough or get the timing down to the point where they were able to stop him. Right. And I think that's what's that's kind of important in this particular fight. Keith Thurman, he likes to move around and dictate, dictate the pace, and when he comes in, just ish, ish, and he jumps in. And to me, I think against a guy like Danny Garcia, now this is the thing, this is a 50-50 fight. So Danny Garcia, 
just realistically speaking, he has to be able to deal with that early onslaught. I don't think Keith Thurman's going to go out like a punk, and he has to be able to take those early shots and, and buckle down to get the timing. But I, I think Danny Garcia, when his timing kicks in, as long as he stays safe early and, and you know what I mean, doesn't take too many crazy shots up front, then I think the fact that Keith Thurman jumps in is going to be part of his downfall, right? And this is the other thing when it comes to Keith Thurman. For me, in this particular fight, the longer this fight goes, the worse it gets for Keith Thurman, unless his plan is just working throughout the whole time. You know what I'm saying? If Keith Thurman, if he has a plan and just he hurts Danny Garcia and Danny Garcia is just never able to recover and never in the fight, then that's cool. And he just dominates him, that's cool. But if this fight is something like he hurts Danny Garcia, Danny Garcia makes the adjustments and works on his timing, the longer the fight goes, the harder it will be for Keith Thurman to meet. Because, or, or if Danny Garcia has an early success and Keith Thurman has to come from behind. Any of those things to me are bad for Keith Thurman because you do not want to be in there with a guy like Danny Garcia with a deficit because if you're at a deficit, the only way you can win is to take chances and to take the necessary chances. That means you have to really be more aggressive. You know what I'm saying? If Danny Garcia is outboxing you and it's, he's up five rounds to one or something, and you need a knockout to win or, or whatever the situation is, then that plays into Danny Garcia's favor, right? That benefits Danny Garcia if that happens. And the more desperate you become, the more you're in Danny Garcia's playland. You know what I mean? The more you're in his world. If, if Keith Thurman gets desperate and he's like, trying to come from behind or he knows he needs a knockout to win, then I think that's bad because that's when you, you make more mistakes. Or if Keith Thurman starts to fatigue and then come in sloppy, those are all bad signs for Keith Thurman to meet in this particular fight because you don't want to um, get lazy in your attack. You know what I'm saying? Because Amir Khan made that mistake. He was doing great for the first two rounds, but he was throwing too many combinations and he stayed in pocket too long. And that's, it was murder she wrote. He got knocked down and then Danny Garcia being a, a strong finisher, he, he never really led him back into the fight, forced to stop it. So I think timing, Danny Garcia's timing is probably one of the most important reasons. And the fact that Keith Thurman likes to jump in. Now, number four, underestimation. Now, this could be Keith Thurman, it could be the media, it could be fans, but there's this stigma that Danny Garcia, just like he's a punk, like he's a cherry picker, That's a, he's Giff Garcia, and the, the problem with that is Keith Thurman is the, the guy who's been at welterweight longer, he even fought at, I think, 153 against Carlos Quintana, got a stoppage up there, and he's the known threat. So it's easy to underestimate this lineal champion who came from 140. You'd be like, oh, this dude's too little, he can't hurt me. He just, he. this is my world, I'm a welterweight, he's not a true welterweight yet, right? And again, like I said earlier, Danny Garcia is tricky because I watched a lot of boxing and he doesn't look special. I remember watching with my brother the first Eric Morales fight. And I'm like, this dude is basic as hell. I didn't really see. And I mean, that was probably part of it was because that was his first like title shot and stuff like that. But I wasn't even that impressed. But as I've studied and watched more and more Danny Garcia fight, he's obviously doing something in there right. And the other thing is there are fights. I keep it a buck on my channel. I thought he lost to Mauricio Herrera and I thought he looked bad versus Peterson, but I still had him winning because Peterson started too late for me, for my liking. But Peterson looked great in that second half. I just wish he had a bit more offense in those early rounds instead of just like jab and using some fancy footwork and defense. But he was it was part of his game plan to wear Danny Garcia down and then explode and open up with his crazy stamina and stuff. I just wish he would have did that a little bit sooner. That's just my personal taste. But nonetheless, some people thought Peterson won. Some people thought Herrera won. I definitely thought Herrera beat Danny Garcia. But 
they gave him the decision. So all these different stigmas about how good Danny Garcia is. And um, I heard Keith Thurman, he was saying something like, I sat Robert Guerrero down and people are saying he, Robert Guerrero was walking through his shots. That was his second fight at welterweight. You know what I'm saying? So all in all, to me, it's easy to underestimate Danny Garcia. It's very easy because he doesn't look special. When I think of special, like when I see Floyd do pull counters, dodge a shot, and then snap back with a Viper-like right hand, or I see Roy Jones leap from two, three feet out and like knock somebody out with like a leaping hook, that stuff is like dazzling. You're like, oh, wow. Some of the stuff I've seen Mike Tyson or Pacquiao do, you're just like, oh, shit. That's not what you get necessarily with Danny Garcia. It doesn't necessarily look as flashy. Even Broner, Adrian, Adrian Broner has some very flashy combinations. Devontae, Tank Davis, people like that. But when I look at Danny Garcia, you don't necessarily see that. But he, he's he's diligent and he's, he's a workman. And even though it's not flashy, it's easy to misconstrue that with, oh, he's basic. Oh, he can't do nothing. And it's always different when you're in the ring with him. So I think underestimation is, is a big key here because I think the world underestimates Danny Garcia. He's been the underdog and he stays the underdog even when he's the champion. You know what I mean? A lot of people count him out. He's undefeated too. And it's and I think it's because he looks basic. It's just I'm not comparing him to Floyd Mayweather in terms of skill, but it's the same that goes with Floyd Mayweather. Everybody says what they're going to do. Robert Guerrero, he was supremely confident going into the Floyd Mayweather fight. He was like, yeah, yeah, uh, I'm a southpaw, and I, I just really feel I can beat Floyd, and I got a game plan. Like, everybody has a game plan. Canelo, uh, Oscar, McDonald, everybody thinks they have the blueprint to beat Floyd, and then you get in there with him, and he's clearly doing something in there that you can't figure out. You know what I mean? And that's kind of what it is like Danny Garcia. It doesn't look special. Maybe it doesn't look as flashy, but he's obviously doing something in there because a lot of people aren't just like running through him. That's my thoughts. Number five, this is a big one. One time mentality. I like I like Keith Thurman's attitude. I like Keith Thurman as a fighter, but I think that in this fight can get him in trouble. And what I mean by the one time mentality is Keith Thurman makes fights harder than they need to be at times very eerily similar to certain fighters like Tim Bradley, Lamont Peterson. I've seen them all do this where they can box. They can box, strictly box and set things up, but they'll make it a dog fight when they don't even have to. Bradley did it with Ruzan Provotnikov. Why would you make that a dog fight with this Russian killer who has one punch debilitating power? You know what I'm saying? Or you were fighting Jesse Vargas, beating him down for 11 rounds, and then you switch up, and instead of bringing the fight to him like you did the first 11 rounds, Bradley started to get on his bike, and he got timed, and then Jesse Vargas almost knocked him out. You know what I mean? And I've seen that with Keith Thurman, surprisingly, where he gets lured into a dog fight or the wrong type of fight. I first seen it, or one of the early times I remember seeing it, was against Diego Chavez, and he was losing. He was losing the, the type of fight he was trying to fight Diego Chavez. He probably realized, damn, this dude from Argentina can crack, and he, he's, he's, he can box, and he can brawl. But Keith Thurman was trying to brawl more than he should have, and it just wasn't good. He had to make some adjustments, and then he was able to adjust. He hurt Diego Chavez to the body and then ended up getting the stoppage in that fight. But he had to make some adjustments. And most recently, his very last fight, I think um, it showed that with Sean Porter. I Shout out to my dude, Sean Porter. But I think he could have made that night much easier. But he made it in the trenches war. And it was a very close. It was a fantastic fight. Fight of the year type. But I also think he made it harder. Now, it wouldn't have been as as exciting as it was but he made it more dangerous than it needed to be i think he could have easily with his his speed and his skill set he could have took more of a kill brook approach and just really tried to outbox you because actually he probably has more foot movement than a kill brook right so he could have done that and sometimes you got to do that because there were points in the fight where Sean Porter, that's what he does. He stays at your chest, and he wants that rugged. He's a former football player. He wants that in-your-face, phone booth type of 
aggressive fight. You know what I'm saying? So why give it, give him what he wants? You know what I'm saying? Like that doesn't make sense to me. Now, again, it, it's fun for uh, a fight fan perspective and it makes fight of the years, but sometimes it's just about winning. And then, you know, you do that with someone who's, who's better suited for that, where you can dog them or, you know what I mean? Cause you don't want to give the wrong people their type of fight. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to give the wrong person the type of fight that they've been looking for. You got to be smart. One of the people that I've seen live a couple of times that's excellent with this is Terrence Crawford. He knows who to to box, like Victor Posto. He wasn't playing no games. He was like, I got to box this dude to set stuff up at first. He wasn't going guns blazing like he did Gamboa or John Molina or somebody. But obviously he's seen something in those styles that he felt he can compete. You know what I mean? You got to you gotta pick and choose. Even Leo Santa Cruz. I was proud of Santa Cruz versus Carl Frampton too because he actually outboxed Carl Frampton you know what I'm saying he outboxed Carl Frampton and he could have made it the same type of fight he always makes it but he had to make certain changes just to secure that that victory and adjust from the first fight and that's what you have to do so for me I seen that one time the chaos for life and being so eager to get a knockout that's not good against a counter puncher with power with a crazy left hook like a Danny Garcia because like I said you might end up jumping into something or even like a even if you get your person hurt like Pacquiao did to Marquez it's a counter puncher with power so you can never be too too sure you know what I mean like you have to be cal you have to be calculated and cautious the whole time so I think Keith Thurman his temperament he makes fights harder than they need to be at times and again, against a guy like Danny Garcia, I don't know if that will serve to his advantage. Number six, body shots. This one's kind of a no-brainer. If you look at the Sean Porter fight and Luis Colazzo, that's kind of been the best blueprint on what Keith Thurman really doesn't like. And it's those body shots for whatever reason. Maybe his off-season weight, he gets too big, I don't know. But he don't look like he liked those body shots. And Colazzo was the first to really exploit that. And Colazzo has good power, snappy power. But I don't I wouldn't say it's top three in the division power. You know what I'm saying? But it was he's a southpaw and it was well placed. So Colazzo showed you that. And it was a fight he was losing. I thought Colazzo, the first early rounds versus Thurman, he wasn't really doing much. You know what I'm saying? And, and Thurman was having his way. And he was just like trying to fill out Keith Thurman and stuff but when that opportunity presented itself he hurt Thurman and he hurt him bad and Thurman's like running around the ring and holding himself and he almost went down he admits that he almost went down so I mean if I seen that then that means the world seen it and Angel Garcia and Danny Garcia seen it so it's it's not going to be surprising if they try to use that as a game plan I also seen him hurt to the body versus Sean Porter. So to me, that's like a a soft spot. If you remember Van Damme, bam! if you remember the movie Bloodsport, and he, he was like, what are you doing? Keep going. Go for the gut. Chong Lee is sweet in the gut. Like he told him, Chong Lee is sweet in the gut. That's where you attack him. So to me, that's that's like a almost a kryptonite for Keith Thurman. So. I, again, I wouldn't be surprised if the Garcias really tried to make um, an impact on that body, just like Bradley did, Timothy Bradley did versus Brandon Rios. You know what I mean? If a guy has to kill himself to make weight or he don't like that body shots, because some guys recover. Roy Jones taught me this, you know what I'm saying? Roy Jones says he can recover from a headshot. This should go to his body. He ain't going to recover from that. Like, that's what it is. Guys, some guys recover to the head quick, you know what I mean? They'll be, they'll be like dazed and then they, they'll get over it. But that body shot, that'll shut your whole shit down. You know what I mean? If you get hit right, like you look at Matthew Macklin when he got knocked out by Golovkin to the body. I mean, it's like paralyzing. You really can't do nothing but roll around on the ground. You know what I mean? Even Bernard Hopkins versus De La Hoya, it didn't look like he was, he wasn't like knocked out in the sense of like unconscious, but looked like he was he's rolling around in pain so it can't be good so to me that's a sweet spot for Keith Thurman and since everybody's seen the Colazzo fight and, and does their homework and studying at this level 
I would imagine that the Garcias would would utilize the the body shot and use Danny Garcia's timing, his power, and stuff to work the body. And finally, number seven, Danny Garcia and his role as the underdog. What I mean by that is Danny Garcia, he's been here before. He he's almost always the underdog. I think he opened up as the underdog in this fight and pretty much like all of his big fights. Even Zab Judah fight. I, I don't know on the books, but a lot of people fan wise were telling me that Zab Judah was all wrong. They said Danny Garcia is this clubbing fighter, he's too slow. Zab is a southpaw with speed, power, fighting at home. And Zab did good in the championship rounds, but Garcia was hurting Zab Judah and, and this and that. So to me, I think Danny Garcia, he rises to the occasion. Everyone underestimates him and the Gift Garcia and the Lamont Peterson and the Herrera fight. The funny thing is, if you really look at it, Danny Garcia's most suspect performances were against guys that nobody expected to get. Like even the Ashley Thea Payne fight was tough for him. That was earlier in his career. But you look at guys like Ashley Thea Payne, Mauricio Herrera. Mauricio Herrera had already lost to my dude Kareem Mayfield at that point. And this was a Puerto Rico feel-good fight for the Puerto Rican-American, Danny Garcia. And Danny Garcia was a champion. He was the clear favorite. And Herrera surprised a lot of people. And a lot of people thought he won that fight. Same thing with Peterson. Matisse had already knocked out Peterson. Um, Peterson had already lost to Bradley and... The con fight was close, so at that point, people knew who Garcia was, and people thought Garcia was going to easily beat Peterson. Kind of Peterson. I mean, triangle theories don't work in boxing, but if you look at it, and that's how some people, casual people, judge boxing, they're like, okay, Danny Garcia beat Lucas Matisse. Lucas Matisse stopped Peterson, and Danny Garcia is undefeated still, so he's going to easily beat Peterson, but that wasn't the case. It wasn't easy. And some people don't even think he beat him in at all. So that's that. The people who gave him the toughest fights were not supposed to be the ones that gave him the toughest fights. His toughest fights were supposed to be guys like Lucas Matisse, right? Amir Khan. And he beat them more convincingly than he did Herrera or Peterson. And boxing is sometimes fickle like that. Same thing for years, five, six years, people said Pacquiao was the one to knock out Floyd and beat him. And then Pacquiao landed 71 punches and then complained about his shoulder. And Marcos Maidana and Miguel Cotto, a guy that Pacquiao beat and stopped, gave Floyd a tougher fight. Cotto, Pacquiao, or Cotto versus Mayweather, or Maidana and Mayweather won, were way harder fights than the Pacquiao fight. You know what I'm saying? They're way more competitive. So boxing is fickle like that. Danny Garcia, from what I've seen, he rises to the occasion and he finds a way to get it done. Not saying Keith Thurman doesn't, but from what I've seen, Keith Thurman has been, I mean, how many times has he been the underdog? I don't think he was the underdog versus Sean Porter, Jesus Soto Carras. You know what I'm saying? Danny Garcia was winning fights that he wasn't supposed to win, like Amir Khan, Zab Judah, Lucas Matisse. You know what I mean? He, he came from the bottom and fights as the underdog and emerged victorious. So I, from what I've seen, it's hard for me to go against the grain and, and not pick Danny Garcia in this particular fight. But it should be a fun scrap. I can really picture both fighters hurting each other. It's 50-50. If Danny Garcia wins and I'm right, then great. It's uh, on to the next. If Keith Thurman wins, props to him. It should be a good fight. I'm going to pick, for the sake of a prediction, I'll pick Danny Garcia via a decision, a unanimous decision. I wouldn't be surprised if, if he stops Keith Thurman. Again, it's all going to be dependent on Keith Thurman, how if he gets desperate and, and like runs into something. But I, I, could, I could picture Keith Thurman going out by a body shot. TKO or, or getting caught with that left hook jumping in as well but we'll say a unanimous decision but either way I have Danny Garcia winning and it should be a great fight great fight for boxing it's a unification fight free TV CBS you guys let me know what you think what your predictions are for this particular fight and I didn't put this as an actual reason but this is going to be like an honorable mention reason and that's 
Danny Garcia fought Samuel Vargas, and I think that was very smart from his team and his camp to put him in there with that fight. Now, a lot of people criticized the fight, rightfully so. I mean, it's a guy Errol Spence stopped, and most people knew he wouldn't lose. But that was a fight to further acclimate him to the welterweight division, and it's a fight where you didn't really run the risk. Most people wouldn't expect Vargas to pull the upset, so you get to work on things. Meanwhile, Keith Thurman has not been in the ring since he fought Sean Porter, and I think that was June of 2016. So he's been on the longer of the layoffs versus Danny Garcia, who got two fights, if I'm not mistaken, last year. And his very last fight was against, uh, it was a definite tune-up against Samuel Vargas, where he was able to, to just kind of play around and work out, work on stuff. So I think the inactivity of Keith Thurman, the car accident, then only fighting Sean Porter, and then being on hiatus, I don't know if that's a good look for him either. So let me know what you guys think of my seven reasons. That's my opinion. Seven reasons I think Danny Garcia will defeat Keith Thurman. But shout out to whoever wins. I could be wrong, but I can also be very right. Drop it in the comment section. Make sure you share the video, like the video as always. Hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video is Ego signing off. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.